This episode of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast is dedicated to the memory of Spurs under-23 team coach Ugo Eheog, who passed away on Friday at the age of 44. Hi, it's episode 34, season 3 of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. My name's Jav. Joining me this week, John Steggles from Merchester. Good morning. And making his debut on the pod, Craig McKissock from Glasgow. Good morning. Right, um, let's begin as we always do with, with new guests on the podcast. Craig, how did you get bitten by the Spurs bug? Um, it really started uh, mid nineties. Uh, I think with the when Sky started coming in a big way with the Premier League. I remember one of the first games was uh, Spurs Man United. I think it was New Year's Day, and we we gubbed them four one. And I uh, stupidly thought I was on to a winner. I thought, here we go, this is the world beaten team, and uh, I thought this will be a team to watch. How wrong I was for the nineties. That's how it was. Incidentally, um, I mean, is, is there a particular team in Scotland that you follow, or, or you just spur through and through the one and only team? I go and watch the the. I grew up in Paisley, um, so I, I do go and see uh, St Mirren every now and again. But I wouldn't say I was a, a supporter or anything. It's just going along when uh, when I can't get down south to see Spurs. Okay. Uh, St Mirren, the football team with that bloody scary yellow sun mascot, or is that another one? No, that's uh, Partick Thistle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've, Fucking terrifying. We've got, pan- <laughs> we've got panda bears. Okay. Uh, um, so earlier this week, let, let, let's re- rewind a few days. Earlier this week... Um, on Wednesday, I was at White Hart Lane to watch the Spurs ladies make history. Um, so, um, so anyone who's obviously listened to the podcast and, and listens to all the updates that, that Bex does every every week, you'll know that Spurs ladies tend to play their home matches at, at Chessent, um, which is a tiny ground with a, with a very small capacity, and it's it's just. It's a shame, really, that, that they don't get to play at, at White Hart Lane. Um, but yeah, history was made on Wednesday, and for the very first time, um, the Spurs ladies got the chance to play at White Hart Lane. And not only that, um, the Spurs ladies who have been flying this season and top of the league, they they clinched the league title um, on on Wednesday. Um, uh, the ladies played West Ham. Um, they won the match four nil um, to to win the. Um, FA Women's Premier League South title um, with still three, three matches in hand. So hopefully, hopefully the the, the men can um, re- <laughs> repeat that feat. It might be a little bit more difficult, but if we can claw back Chelsea's lead, that that'll be good. We'll, we'll talk about that, of course, a bit a bit later in the match. Um, goals from Josie Green in the first half. Um, put the ladies 1-0 up and then in the second half Wendy Martin got a goal um, substitute um, Nikita Winnett got got the third one and then Bianca Baptiste um, rounded it off um, and, and, and got the fourth goal so that's 16 wins from 17 matches um, un, undefeated um, they scored 49 goals all season um, in the league and only conceded 6 um, also the other thing that the, the attendance was pretty, was pretty good, so it was just over 2,000 that, that watched the. Um, they opened up all of the West Stand, and just over 2,000 fans w- were there to watch the Spurs ladies, which um, is actually quite good given that normally, for example, for a cup final last year when the Spurs were in the Ryman's Cup final, 
Um, the attendance, I think, was around about 500, 600. Often for league games, it's 200. So to get over 2,000 in at White Hart Lane was, was really good. Um, and yeah, it was a great night. Um, Janice Galacci, the Spurs skipper, lifted the trophy, um, the league title. And now they, the Spurs ladies have a playoff with the Northern champions. So Spurs are in the, in the Southern League, um, second division, and now, now they've got a, a playoff with Blackburn Rovers replacing the Women's Super League Division 2. So I guess that's like the equivalent of the championship. Um, to add to that, there's obviously they've won the title and the, the Bow, Bow Avenue Cup, um, but they've, they've got two more cup finals as well as the play- playoff with Blackburn. Um, yeah, congratulations, Spurs ladies, and um, they're playing later today. Um, at the New River Sports Stadium against Charlton Athletic kick off at 2 o'clock because we're, this week we're recording the podcast in the morning well, we, obviously we won't have that, that result but it, we'll, we'll mention it in next week's podcast um, other thing I just wanted to say was um, the sad news that we had on Friday um, about the passing away of Hugo Ahiog um, the former Aston Villa Middle, Middlesbrough player and moreover, Spurs under 23 team coach who died um, at the tender age of 44, which uh, isn't really no age to, to go. Um, thoughts on that, John? If I come to you first, I, I'm older than him, so that you know it just makes me think about where I am in my life and and my health and looking after myself, and it, it is tragic and horrible and the. the stuff that's been put online the, and as much as you hate the, the, the coke sniffing alcoholic Merson he, he was visibly visibly upset so um, you know the, the, the stuff that's been said I echo all the sentiments it's just such a, such a tragedy Craig thoughts on on Hugo Ahilg's passing it's, yeah as I said 44 is really no age yeah, yeah, see, I, I can only echo as well what I think everybody's said. Uh, there's been a lot of very touching tributes over the last, uh, you know, day and a half or so. Um, you know, it was I, I, when I started watching the Premier League, uh, he was, you know, one of the one of the greats in the Premier League, a, a fantastic defender for Aston Villa. Um, you know, and then he had a great career. Uh, and did a fantastic job, uh, you know, with us. And we have a lot of players uh, that have come through uh, as a result of of, uh, of his work. So yeah, a great man. You know, it's just it is. It's just a, a, an absolute shame. I thought so with him and his, his, his family. Um, okay, let's let's bring it bring it back to yet to, to yesterday. Um, oh. <sighs> Do, Craig, do we have to? We we do. I don't. I really, I really don't. I um, for me, I I can't fault the performance personally, um, but the outcome. And I and I thought for the large parts of the team, I thought we were the better team. But the outcome, it's just I feel completely deflated. Um, John, I'll, I'll come to you in a minute. Let me start off with Craig. Craig, you were you were well. We were both at the game. Um, thoughts on the game yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it, coming out of the game, I was probably the same as everybody else. Um, absolutely gutted. You know, pig sick. Uh, as you say, played fantastically well for, for large parts of the game. Still managed to concede four goals, three of them from set pieces. Um, you know, it was just little individual uh, decisions being made by players, I think, yesterday that, that just cost us. Um, I thought Dembele was an absolute legend yesterday. I thought he was brilliant. If I was to rate him, he would have got a nine. I thought he was outstanding. Um, but we're just getting—we just got caught yesterday. I think um, a lot of people can put it down to bottling it on the big stage again. People can use the Wembley um, excuse, but yeah, it was a tough one. To uh, when I was thinking about how I was going to answer that today. It was a tough one to try and find an answer to because we did play so well for such large parts of the game, yet managed to lose 4-2. Typical Tottenham, I think. 
John, um, I've I haven't watched any replays of the of, of the game, so I, you know, I'd like to see I'd like to see um, you know action replays, for example, of of, of um, the penalty that we conceded and and, and various other bits. But um, how does it look on on TV? Because it. <laughs> You can you always get one percent before you always get one perspective in the in the match if you're there in the stadium and depending on where you, where you sit but you you don't have the benefit generally of um, of, 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 of replays so what's your there's a there's a, a lovely picture doing the rounds where that you can clearly see that he is jumping over son's legs um, there was barely any contact but the issue is that if you slide in and a tackle in that area, you're inviting the player to do something and giving the referee a decision to make. Any professional player will take that and go for a pen if he's given that opportunity. Kane and Ali would do it. So, you know, I've seen them given, I've seen them get away with it. If it was at the other end, we would have been screaming at the TV had we not got it. It's uh, It was unfortunate, I think really uh, at the end of the day uh, it was a stupid it was a stupid if he'd have gone in and just drawn his legs back like he wasn't going for the tackle he may have got away with it but it, uh, it was such a frustrating game we were playing with such dominant and such verve Dembele was good Ericsson was superb yesterday um, any other game 7 out of 10 games we would have won that I'm utterly fucked off utterly fucked off but it has done has tempered my expectations of what to expect this season had we won that the hyperbole would have been off the charts and everybody would have been having a, a group masturbation about how good we are and how we're going to walk the league and stuff and I'm I'm glad it's been knocked down a notch if I'm honest um, we puffed and puffed with lots of possession but with a game up for grabs Unfortunately, they were able to take two cunts off and bring two bigger cunts on. Mm. In the in the week, Mourinho did a, a number on Conte, and in this week, I think Conte did a number on Poch. Um, and ultimately, having those players on the bench, that's what oil money and corrupting the the market and the system can buy you. Really, Chelsea are classless mugs. Who've, um, you know, they won the pools when Abramovich came along. And I'm proud of the way that our team was made of the grit and the determination and the passion and the coaching that they showed on the pitch. We outplayed them and outclassed them in so many respects these days, it's untrue. I absolutely love my club Spurs. I'm so proud of them and the way they played yesterday. But gutted. Absolutely gutted. I think. For, for me, I felt that... Um, I felt for the large parts of the match, we were the best team. And I felt particularly... You know, you lose an early early goal. That that's something that you, you, teams generally don't plan for. That <coughs> to lose a goal so early in the match, um, you've got to readjust. But we went once we got the equaliser, which by the way, a fantastic header from from Harry Kane. Um, I felt we had real m- momentum, and we should have we should have we, we we tried, but we just couldn't make that breakthrough. We, we should have at that point made it two one. And I think if we did, they looked lost. Chelsea looked lost at that point, um, as it was. They went. They got one uh, worst time that we could con- concede a goal just before half time, but then straight away, what it was, it five, five or ten minutes into the, uh, into the second half, Deli Ali equalised again. I thought at that point at two all we had momentum to get a third goal, and we again looked the better team until that 75th minute and, and Hazard's goal when he came on, and then obviously you can't also you can't legislate for a strike like. Um, uh, Matic that's just you know, that shot his shot was a good shot it was, it was, it was unstoppable um, it was sad for me by the way at, at, with 10 minutes to go that there was a whole wave of fans next n- near where I was sit- sitting just leaving the stadium and I, I don't I don't really get that I know people travel long long distance Craig I know you, you've come all the way down from Glasgow um, I don't know yeah. we haven't spoken about this I, I don't know if you had to leave early or whether you stay to the end um no i always stay to the very end i never yeah. i've never left uh, a football match early. The, um the thing is well, right that's actually 
well, okay, we we we, we can we can we can gloss over that. But we we uh, look, I I I understand that that people travel long distances and and you know sometimes there are only so many trains that go back and and this that and the other and and that's fine. But when you're at a football game, right right at the very very beginning, um, when you've got Paul Coy or in fact it wasn't Paul Coy yesterday, it was whoever it was. I can't remember that the. the person rallying getting getting the well basically telling that that phrase that we hear it so many times at white hot lane at, at, at half time and paul paul Court says get behind the spurs get behind your team you know and too many of our fans didn't do that um it was where i where i was sat there was there was quite a few of us that, that, that were sat next to me that were singing and chanting all the way through and even when, when we went a goal down the heads didn't drop they were still getting behind the team but there were also a fair few people who were moaning uh, so you know for me you've got to get behind your team and um look if we if that game had gone into extra time which it could have done with those fans that have, have have left after 10 minutes they would have had to stay for another half half an hour plus the 10 minutes that they fucked off plus penalties if that was a cup final and we lifted a trophy they'd have to stay to the end i'm sure they would at that point i'm sure they 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 wouldn't have been so precious about their fucking train or um or their saturday night night out and i, I really don't get that that don't get that mentality i'm trying to be uh, I know I'm going on about this, but believe me, I'm trying to be empath- empathetic and, and trying to understand that that you know there are last trains and, and sometimes uh, you're limited in, in your travel options. But like I said, if if it was if it was a, if if we were if that game had gone into extra time or if, if, we, if we were lifting a trophy, those fans wouldn't have left. Um, I was at Swansea a few weeks ago. I stayed at the bit bitter end. Now that that was one of my most enjoyable games of the season. But if I'd left early, I, I would have rued it for for the rest of my life. I would have, I would have regretted the fact that that I would have missed those goals, missed the equaliser, missed the winner, missed Ericsson's third. So I, I think it's, it's it's a fucking disgrace. Um, I'm not gonna, um, yeah, I'm 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 not gonna hold back and and, and... yeah, don't mince your words, Jeff. Yeah. Don't mince your words. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've I've lost the tangent that I was on. Anyway, um, yeah, I, uh, look, we played well. Um, the referee, I think, really didn't help our cause. Um, we had a few questions on that. Um, so Zach Casnola says, "Why was Alonso not booked first half for three late challenges?" Um, he goes on to say, "How does Kante get away with making a career out of fouling and not being sent off?" Um, and then he adds Moses, clear dive, no yellow for him. Um, what are your thoughts on the on the referee, gents? And what are your thoughts on the decision, of the, the penalty decision? Um, John, if I come to you first. So Alonso had five fouls before he got a yellow. Luis, seven. Kante, eight. And Ali and Toby did one foul and got a yellow straight away. Ali was being niggly fouled all through the game and the referee did fuck all. There's some stats bandied about, um, which partly I don't believe, because one of them says that in the last 19 game or 19 games in the last three seasons that this guy's referee Chelsea, which he can't have done because they haven't played 19 times in three fucking seasons, but he gives them every decision. Where is where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, uh, oh, fuck! I can't find it. But he was biased and biased to the extreme. He was fucking poor he really was and he gave them everything and he, he was the one that gave the John Terry non-goal um, as soon as his name came out of the hat and was the referee you you, you wonder how how much he's been paid off and how, how much of a Chelsea fan he fucking is he's um, you know he, he, I think about we sent off one Chelsea player in all the games that he's ref them and they've just lost five and they play, you, you know he, fuck him he's a fucking shock and fraud of a referee it it wasn't a penalty and to be fair to him martin Atkinson waited for the for the linesman to make the decision before he did so if you want to blame anybody there blame the referee um yeah fuck him absolute fuck him craig are we being a bit harsh or no i think uh you want to avoid using the word cheat at times, but um, 
but yesterday I uh, and I watched the game again this morning uh, just so I could uh, I had the match obviously view of the game plus I also watched it on telly and he got a lot of decisions wrong yesterday and uh, yeah it was very biased his decision making um, I think with the penalty yeah I, the linesman uh, he did I, I was it was right in front of me and uh, I watched it and the referee straight away looked to his linesman. I mean, it took a hell of a long time to give it. I mean, there was at least 15, 20 seconds uh, it, it took to decide to give it. And he waited for his linesman to flag. But on top of that, yeah, you know, as, as John says, we players, one tackle, booking, Chelsea, continuous fouling. I thought he had a very, very poor game yesterday, uh, Atkinson. He's not a referee I particularly like, um, but yesterday I thought it was very obvious. I thought it was it was almost blatant yesterday. Uh, he so was just very, very poor. I found a stat that so at half time Chelsea committed 16 fouls and got one yellow card. We committed eight and got two. That says, says it, all. it all. Yeah, says it all. Yeah. It, it, and it's always the way you can see teams just niggling away and doing foul after foul, and the first time that one of our players does a foul it's an instant yellow it's it, it happens in more games than not if, if i'm honest that i'm watching it's fucking disgusting yeah the, the referees are a bell end and a long line of bell ends in terms of referees this season that, 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 that i've seen um that there was a, a, a the booking for 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 delhi in the second half um it, to me it looked like a cynical foul from not not not, not a dirty foul but um, they had a breakaway. I think it was on near the halfway line, and Daly knew what he was doing, but he, was ju- he just stopped it and, and just stopped the breakaway. And he got a yellow straight away, and I didn't get that. There was no malice. It wasn't dirty. Um, I, I mean, for me, either Martin Atkinson is just a shit referee, or he's a bent one. Um, and I'd like to know if he's not a shit referee, um, how many, how many, how many rubles. Um, Abramovich has, has has put into his account because he's just it, it was just corrupt beyond belief and if he's not corrupt then he's a shit referee. Um, I, I just I, I don't understand how officials like that can be in charge of games and they can just get away with it because he will referee another match in a few weeks from you know next week and and then another high profile game and it'll just go unchecked and no one will I mean John when you when you were watching the game at home did did any of the pundits on the BBC talk about um the refereeing decisions they talked they went through the um the penalty decision and they all kind of said yeah it was a pen it was a pen because he went in and you know and, and there was you know they a, a little bit of contact or whatever um it to be honest with you, they didn't question any of the snidey fouls that Alonso was doing constantly through the game. But if you want to temper it a little, again, it's still a mystery that Dyer and half the players weren't sent off in the Battle of Stamford Bridge, if I'm honest. So if you're going to, you know, it does balance itself out a little. But no, he was fucking bad yesterday. And you can't blame him ultimately for the for the result and losing the match. But it's one of the, another thing that stacks up as being part of it. Um, the sun, the sun penalty. Uh, from my viewpoint, I could see him stick his leg leg out, and it just felt like in slow motion when he did. And I was like, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" I can see what's going to happen here. And I felt, and I've only seen it once, and I felt that um, Moses dived, but I, that was just my reaction. And then there was a moment. I don't know from your viewpoint, Craig, what it was like, but there was a moment straight afterwards where Atkinson paused he didn't point to the penalty spot straight away he, he then turned looked at his linesman and then he then he pointed to the penalty spot but it all just seemed very slow the whole thing I, I don't know I'd, I'd like to see it again but I'm, I'm not convinced it was a a pen well I'll put well, I mean I'll John put, was right go on Craig sorry carry on John I was going to say I'll put yeah, the picture just... up on the <laughs> I'll put the picture up on the uh, the, the podcast tweet page if it, people haven't seen it and if they want to just check out the, the the clearness of the dive for people to to see. Yeah, I mean he did. John's right. I mean he went over uh, the top of um, Son. Very little contact, but 
Son created the, you know, he created the situation with a stupid decision to go to ground. I was the same as you, Jav. I was looking at it and I could see him starting to go down. And I'm thinking, stay on your feet. What are you doing? I was like, just stand up. Um, so, I mean, if Son doesn't go to ground, situation doesn't happen. You don't give the referee a decision or the, the linesman a decision to make. So, as much as, you know, I agree it was a dive and all the rest of it, but Son created that yesterday. You don't give you don't give the referee a decision to make. You show him out, help, put him into the I corner. Like you know, um, I know that we're probably going to talk about formations and where some played, etc. But yeah. it just shows up his lack of defensive capabilities. And there's a, you know the Man City game as well shows up his lack of defensive capabilities. Even a half fit Davis would have been better in that position. I'm sure of it. That's that's the trouble. I mean, with with Davis, I, I've I've read a lot on social media. People calling out Maurizio and his team selection. Um, the fact is, we don't know. Davis had a knock, um, but he was fit enough to be on the bench. But I don't know. I don't know the extent of that knock. I don't know how bad it was. I don't know whether whether Poch didn't want to risk him or whether he had an eye on um, on Wednesday's match against. Palace and then um, the Arsenal game and bearing in mind we still got Rose out injured so we don't have if you, if he's not fully fit and you play him um, uh, d- 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 is that the right thing to do you know, also the other f- flip side of it maybe Mauricio looked at it and he thought well if, if I play so we talked about this, this off air John but if you play Son um in a wing back role and he's on the front foot and he's attacking all the time then you, you pen in pen um, uh, Moses into his own half um, so maybe there was a tactical um, decision behind it but uh, it didn't it didn't make sense it was all it, I saw it as almost an effort for him to fit his best 11 players into a, into one of our best formations but Son's best floating around the front three with with Ali and Ericsson just behind Kane he, he if there was a knock and Davis um, was injured then uh, why was he on the bench and why was he warming up at half time uh, uh, surely you risk him in you know, uh, risk him you have you have to we, we he changed a winning formation just to try and get somebody into that position and it just it didn't work it really did maybe, maybe you should have gone for a, a straight four at the back and and you know, play Sonny in a four-man midfield or up up front in a two with with Kane just didn't work. You don't, you can't experiment in an FA Cup semi-final unless it really is forced on you by injury. It's a horrible brain fart of a decision, but I love him so much I can't hold it against him. However, however gutted I am. Craig. Yeah, uh, I have to agree. When I saw the. When I saw the lineup yesterday, I thought, "What's what's his decision making here?" I thought, "What what's this?" Um, I, I agree. If, if Ben Davis has uh, has a knock, I think with the fixtures coming up, I think you will have to, you know, leave him out and try and find some other way around it. But I wouldn't have put Son uh, out on the left. What he did in the second half when he brought Walker on and put uh, Kieran Tripper uh, yeah, Tripper out on the on the left hand side uh, could he have gone with that at the beginning ok Trippier's not got a left foot but would that have been better Put you know, when you look at the penalty decision would uh, would Trippier minus a left foot have done any better than what Son was doing for the for the first half I don't know um, a lot of questions yesterday with uh, Pochettino's line up and his um, formation but Unless he comes out and tells us, I really don't know what he's thinking. Is I really don't. I just think he got it wrong yesterday. I think ultimately, whilst you can make a case um, and question question the the, the the starting lineup, I mean, it's got to be tempered by the fact that we don't know the extent of Davis's injury, um, and I, don't, I still don't think that costs us the match. I think ultimately, we. For me, we were still, I think, overall 
the better team for, for, for most parts of the game and I think we just when we were level at one all and two all we just didn't take our chances um, we, we really seemed on the front foot they, they looked devoid of ideas and we didn't we didn't capitalise on that um, and in terms of the goals we conceded yeah um, perhaps there will be some question marks over, 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 over the defending um, on that a question from Ed Brad who says set pieces why are we so poor at defending or, cre- or creating from them well, look at the amount of corners we had <laughs> you know, and why? What? I'd, I'd, I'd definitely. We've said it before, but Trippier needs to be on corners, and Ericsson needs to be on the edge of the box shooting. Um, the, the, you know, the amount that didn't beat the first man, or the amount that went short and we lost the ball, it, that needs to change. And that's been like that for for many a year. You know, they have one corner and they fucking score from it. What the fuck? What? Can I just go back to Son and say the other thing that he did by having him starting in that awkward position is whatever plan B we had from the bench was affected by him starting it would have been better to have Son coming on later just to change it up a little bit when we were chasing a goal and yeah. stick him in a better position by having him on the pitch we lost that completely well we didn't have we didn't have a the, you know, the, yeah I mean the, the the bench because we've got Lamella out injured see Danny Rose um is injured too. I know he's not necessary. You wouldn't consider a left back as a as a bench option that would come on and change the game. But um, who did we have on the bench? We had Nkundu. We had um, Sissoko. Jan- Sissoko. Y- Janssen. Janssen. Who? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not his greatest fan. Um, we didn't really have many options. Um, no. Which I, I don't. I, I was speaking to somebody after the match and they, they were being critical of, of Pochettino and they were suggesting why the hell did he bring on Nkundu who's, who's too young and and not really been given a chance. I'm not a big fan of Nkundu from what I've seen from him. I mean, I think he's got pace, certainly. I don't think he's got the end product yet, but he's, he's a young man. But all I would say is, well, OK, if you're not going to bring on Nkundu, who do you bring on? Do you bring on the mighty, mighty Sissoko? Do you bring no. on Ke- do you bring on Kevin Vimmer? No, we don't have those game changes. Yeah, if we had if we had a fit Lamella, for example, you could bring him on. Or if you had a fit Lamella starting in 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 the team, um, Son might be on the bench, for example. Um, we, or, we just... or we start with Walker and Trippier in defence, and then have Son to bring on. Yeah, you know, part part of be, being critical there was 47 million quid worth of player in Sissoko and, and Kudu sitting on the bench that, that weren't used properly or haven't been used properly or have failed depending on how you look at it and and that's 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 where we've got to look we need to have better options and we need to have better people on the benches well hopefully Dan, Daniel will, will get his finger out in the summer and um, and back Pochettino in the transfer market um a question from Richard Healy. Having watched our last seven semi-final defeats, what is it that other teams have that we are lacking? I don't think we have too much to worry about with this team, but wonder how we can change things without winning a cup. Um, he makes a valid point, although I don't think you can make comparisons with, with all the other previous semi-finals, because you know, different eras, different players and all of that. Um, we've got, obviously, a very, very good team, probably the best in all the time that I've been following Spurs, the most well-equipped to... It's a challenge, for, for example, for a league title. Um, but I think that if you take Man City, if you take under Pellegrini, if you take Chelsea, for example, under Mourinho in both spells, one of the th- things that they first did was win a trophy. They won the League Cup, which isn't the most prestigious trophy, but they won that trophy. And Mourinho this, this season, he's, he's already got the League Cup under his belt at United. They might add to that and win the Europa. Um, we haven't yet won a trophy. Those players haven't yet. I know that the, the some of the lads who are at Ajax, Vertonga and Toby Eriksson, um, they might have won trophies elsewhere. But generally, we've got a very, very young team in our defence. But also, they need to taste. They've had a taste of losing big matches. They've had a taste of losing the Capital One Cup final. They've had a taste of challenging for the league title last season and, and again this season. And... And hopefully that those experiences will make them stronger. But they also need a trophy under their belt. Um, otherwise, it will become more and more difficult for them to get the confidence to push on from that. And also, it become more and more difficult to keep some of those players. Because there will be a point in time where some of those players will look, and they'll look at their 
um, look at the number of medals that they've won or not won, and they'll be like, well, my career's only for, you know, a career for Premier of a footballer at the top level is what I don't know, ten or fifteen years, and they might look to move on. Craig. Yeah, I mean the the question around the semi-finals. I mean it, it's just bottle. I think it's something that seems to be ingrained in our club that we get to we get to these big occasions, these semi-finals, finals, whatever, and whatever the, the stage, we just don't seem to turn up. Um, you know, we've seen it for a couple of decades now. Um, okay, minus a couple of yeah. League Cups, but I mean, I was reading the stat today. I mean, Chelsea uh, have won ten fixtures at the at the new Wembley Stadium since it came out, and we've only won one. Uh, and yet we've played like nine games there now, and only won one. Is it the Wembley effect? Uh, I think most of the semi-finals we've lost have been at Wembley, um, and we've had some. We've had some drubbings in, in semi-finals there as well. I mean, we've been hammered a few times. I don't know. I'd, is it is it just bottle on the you know bottling it in the big stage? Um, the semi the, the the final against Chelsea a couple of years ago for me was was really disappointing. We just didn't show up. Yesterday, we were incredible. We showed up and still managed to lose. Um, so it's <laughs> it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Why we why we just can't win, you know, on these big occasions. I don't know if it's a lack. It's not for a lack of desire. You could see the players wanting well, it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, it's you could say that perhaps um, the, the the tragic events that unfolded in the week um, hindered uh, the, the, the whatever setup they were going through and their preparation for the game. I don't like to think it would because they're professional people, but you've got to put add some of that into the mix. Um, but I think Wembley's... A, it can't be a hoodoo. Part, we, we, do need, we do need to win something. And it, we need to press Chelsea now till the end of the season and make them squirm and get as high up that league uh, as, I, as we can. I, somebody asked a question on social media earlier on would you accept third place now? No, I fucking wouldn't. I, w I, wanna, mm. I want Chelsea to be squirming. I want us to put the pressure on them and I want us to fucking fight for everything for and and punish them immensely. I said last week I'd rather have the league and the FA Cup. This will this stings and this hurts now and it will hurt for, for a couple more days and it will hurt on Monday when I go in and see all the fucking Chelsea fans and they have some gloating. But... We've got another game on Wednesday night. Let's pick ourselves up and let's go again. Let's go again. Better to lose the one in the the, the cup when and not affect our league run. I, I think really. Um. Okay. Well, but, but we'll we'll talk about the the league league games coming up in a minute. Um. Just a few few more questions. Um. Around yesterday, another one from Zach Gasnola. Um, is Toby in fact fallible and unlikely to become Pope? <laughs> <laughs> is he a Catholic? I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, I, I I would say he could be whatever he wants to be. Um, uh, basically, he should have a lot. Um, yeah, uh, he. For the for the amount of mistakes he does make on the pitch, it's easy to overlook the ones when he does make one. He, you know, he, he had to make that tackle. If he if he'd have made that tackle a, a second later, it's in the box and it is a def. It would have been a a definite pen. You know, uh, Loris was in the right. He, he stepped two steps to the to the right and the ball went over the left, which he shouldn't have done. But Loris had to be fair to Loris. He hasn't had very much to do in goal recently, and I don't Loris. know. He's not concentrated very much. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I thought Toby's been outstanding. I thought he's been brilliant. And as as John said yesterday, he had no option but to make that tackle. He really didn't. There was three of them. You know, there was Toby, Jan, and uh, Toby, Jan, and, uh, and and Dyer. Three of them there, and none of them seemed to. Uh, 
they were all kind of you could see them running back looking at each other thinking who's who's going for it who's going to do it and I, I think as it went further on get closer to the box Toby had no option so I don't blame Toby for that yesterday um, I don't blame him at all I thought he had no option I thought the card was a card uh, but he did what he had to do yesterday but Lloris yeah Lloris was poor I thought for the goal I thought uh, uh, his side of the goal it wasn't as if it was top corner mm. I don't think it was really struck with that much power um, so no unfortunately I think Hugo's uh, got to hold his hands up with that one yeah no I agree and, and on Toby by the way I remember that there was a, it might have been the Southampton match I was with you um, at John um, when we conceded a goal and I think Toby was at fault for that one um, as I recall was it Southampton Ball, the ball came into him, possibly. Anyway, um, recently, anyway, there, there was a match and he was at fault. And I remember there was, a, <laughs> there, there was a, there was a, it was one of the very rare times that he was at fault. And there was a stat doing the rounds, and it's and it listed the amount of mistakes that he had made over the course of a season, and it was hardly any, um, you know. And I don't, I think we can't be too critical of, of him. And by the way, it's fine, it's fine lines. Yeah, as you said, if it had been a minute later, it might have been in the box. That would have been even worse. If if somehow he'd got the ball, it would have been a fine tackle, and we'll be talking about it as as being, um, you know, just just a brilliant and brilliant tackle from from Toby. Um, so uh, I'm not going to be harsh on him. Um, uh, final one from a question from Ed Brad, who says, as much as I totally agree with the starting eleven, um, and feel we played well, did. Poch show again his tactical naivety by switching up a winning side and experimenting in, a, in a, such a crucial game. I think we've sort of touched upon that, really. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah. I agree with the starting lineup. Sorry? Did this guy agree with? Yeah, lineup? yeah, unless he's unless that's a typo, but yeah. Uh, well, no, he, he's been nothing but outstanding in every capacity this season. But it shows you can still can make monumental fuck ups, and and it's just a pity it was on such a big occasion, really. Yeah. Mm. I, I yeah. I I think that I think I think that, that I, I still think that the decisions, the starting lineup wasn't what cost us. Um, I think there were there, there were other factors, um, but you know we still had enough there on the pitch to to beat them. Um, the sad, sad reality is that, that we didn't. They're through to a final. We're not. They can win the double, um, but we can still stop them winning the double if we catch them in the league, which is which is what, what we're going to talk about next. Um, Crystal Palace on Wednesday, middle of the week, um, and then we've got um, the North London derby a week today. Um, predictions for both matches and. Can we catch? I know John, you were on the pod last week, so we've we've discussed this to, to some degree. Um, can we catch Chelsea? Um, and I suppose the question I've got is on the back of yesterday's game, will that result impact our our our, our um, ability to catch Chelsea? Maybe it won't have any bearing whatsoever. Um, Craig, I'll come to you first. Um, a few weeks ago in the in the pub, you were very feeling very confident that we could catch Chelsea. Are you still feeling as bullish then as you are now? Yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Uh, I think if we get if Chelsea drop points against Southampton on Tuesday, they've not got much time uh, in the build up to that game, so they might be feeling a wee bit fatigued. All it takes is for them to drop a couple of points there. If we beat Palace on on Wednesday. Um, then going into the North London Derby next week, one point behind or something like that, no problem. There's, uh, it's just about us getting ourselves, you know, picking ourselves up and and moving on. I don't think yesterday will have any uh, impact on the, the fixtures ahead. We've got some. I mean, we have some really tricky fixtures coming up. Palace away is not going to be easy. Um, neither was Swansea away. Uh, neither was Burnley away. So Palace. I'm not overly worried, but I think it will be a tough game. Uh, Arsenal worries me, uh, just because of what they can bring. Whether this poor run or whatever it is they're on at the moment, it's immaterial. 
you know, when they come to White Hart Lane for the last time, it's going to be a completely different affair. I think it's going to be... It's in our hands, though. I mean, we said earlier on, we just need to keep winning. But we've got some really tough games coming up. Palace away, uh, Arsenal, then Leicester and Man United. So I still think we can do it. I don't think there's any games between now and the end of the season that we cannot win. Um, I think we can we can win them all. And uh, it's just pick ourselves up and... Uh, on to Wednesday. Can you see us getting f- uh, maximum points from the next two matches? Yes. Yeah, I, I can. I think. Yeah, I think we'll get a result on Wednesday. I think the the players will be a wee bit disheartened from from yesterday. They'll be they'll be up for it. I think they'll be looking to respond. Um, and I think uh, you know, yeah, I think I think we'll get three points on Wednesday. And I, I think next week. Next week's the big one, though. I think next week's the one where we really need to turn on the style. Uh, last night on the derby at, at White Hart Lane, we need to, not just the performance, but we need a good result there as well. Another 4 0 win will do us nicely. I've already seen uh, Conte complaining that we've got an extra day's rest after the FA Cup final for our match with uh, Crystal Palace. But. Yes, that. Considering the decisions his team got yesterday from the ref, he should be smiling. It won't be; it's not going to be easy playing Palace, and I fully expect us to be seven points behind again when we when we go into that game. Um, but if uh, bold prediction, if we go, if we win every game before now and the end of the season, we win the league. For me, Chelsea will drop points. Um, it, it, the game. Th- this with the build up to this game the, 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 the Chelsea fans at work the discussions was it could be a, a pivotal weekend in the title race they they weren't confident they lose their nerves go a little bit more but maybe the fact that they have won I, I would rather lose in, in, in the cup I've said it, it losing the cup than win, the losing the league we just need we need, need to go again just get up and go again Yep. This is this is what I was sort of driving at last week when I when I asked the question I, I posed the question on the pod to you John and um and to Aaron Wolf who was on the podcast last week about you know would you rather if you could have an either or scenario would you would you rather win the league or would you rather win win the cup and and the the my my reasoning or what prompted that question was that in the back of my mind I thought. What if you woke up on Sunday morning, and you've just gone out of the cup final? Sorry, so of, of the semi-final, you've gone out of the FA Cup, and you're feeling really down. And we've we've been there so many times as Spurs fans, and that's it. And that's that's you out. You've, you're not going to be at Wembley again. You're not going to be there for the final. You're not going to win that trophy, but you've got that one little thing that you see. Your season isn't over. You can still you can still catch Chelsea and win the league title. And that's where we are this morning. I'd rather we'd won yesterday, but we haven't. And that's where we find ourselves. And 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 I don't think it's over. And I um, do you know what? I'm gonna. I'm. I think we're gonna win the league. I, I think. I think we can catch Chelsea. I think it's gonna be bloody difficult. Um. I think that if we win all our matches, um, and they drop points just in one of those games whether that's Southampton or the one after that Everton which won't be easy away from home if they draw one of those or, or, or lose one of those games so then suddenly we're, we're within one game one result of going top of the league because of our goal difference or even um, going above them on points um, so it doesn't take much that would it just requires one result against them and okay I know we have to win all our matches but I can I can see it. I really can. Um, my, the only concern I've got is if we if we drop points elsewhere, and I think we'll I think we'll beat Palace. I think we're going to bounce back on Wednesday. I think we'll beat Palace. I was worried about Arsenal until a few weeks ago. I think we'll beat them. I'm not worried about that now. West Ham, they always are tricky and they frustrate. But from what I've seen from from them in recent matches, they are a shower of shite, and I think we'll, we'll beat them e- easily. The one that concerns me is United away. Sorry, United at home. Apologies. Um, that that could be tricky. And then we've got Leicester away after that penultimate game of the season. Um, 
that will be tricky too. But by that point, if we're still in the title race on the penultimate game of the season, then it, it, that's fine. Um, at least we're, or you know, if we're level with points or within a point of Chelsea, then then I'm not overly worried at that point. I'm not overly worried also about Hull on the final day of the season because, again, if we st- we're not going to win if we do win the league title. We're not going to win it with a game in hand. It's it's going to happen on the final final day. So I, I'm I'm not going to I'll worry about that when we when we come to it. It's it's the United game that concerns me because Mourinho will come to White Hart Lane. He will make it difficult. He will frustrate. Um, and uh, uh, if you recall a few season season ago, ago when Liverpool were top of the table um, in in May. Never mind in April. They were at top of the table in, in, in May, and that should be a bit of an inspiration for us um, in terms of catching Chelsea. They were top of the t- t- table in May, and they lost the, the league title at the very end, towards the end of the season, with a couple of games left to, to Man City. But one of the matches I think they lost was to... Um, yeah, it was to... to um, it was to Chelsea at, at Anfield, um, that famous slip from Gerrard. Um and Marie, Mourinho loved on that day being the party pooper, and I think he he would he would take great relish in um, in his United team, even if they're not going to win win the league or they're, they're not even in contention, but just just to have some say in it, just for him to have the, the his moments. Um, it is I know they're playing a Europa game a few days earlier, but and that could have a bearing, but I, that that's the one that worries me. Well, they've got Arsenal, then four days later, they've got Celta Vigo, three days later, they've got us. It's a tough run of games. Um, uh, if uh, it, It's not going to be easy. The less, the less the game is the one that concerns me the most, I think, at the moment. And also, for some reason, Hull away, because they, 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 their manager hasn't lost a home game in something like 42 matches now. Or, oh, so that isn't going to be easy. He's a, he, he's a good manager. Um, and I'm, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Hull, having gone to university there. So I'm quite glad they're, that they're picking up. Um, but win our game, win all of our, win all of our games, we win the league. Okay. Um, Scott, uh, prediction for for Wednesday. Um... Three two to us. Okay. Well, and then um, Sunday. Arsenal, four nil to us. <laughs> okay, um, Craig, Palace on Wednesday. Three uh, one on Wednesday for us, and next week, yeah, I think four nil as well. No problem. Okay, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with three one on Wednesday, and uh, I can actually see us going going one nil down to, to Palace and then coming back into it like we did against Swansea but I don't think we'll, we'll leave it that late I, I, I think it'll be it'll be, it'll, it'll be settled much before then um, Arsenal I can't go with with four um, five then two, <laughs> two nil two nil <laughs> alright and, and we all think we're going to win the league and we can catch Chelsea is that yes. is that the consensus yes yeah yeah, yeah fuck it Okay. Um, right, on that note, um, thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Jav. Um, yeah, thanks, I should just add that, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, um, but um, we've got, um, I'm interviewing Martin Cloak and Cat Law from the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust on the 11th of May. So um, I know we've had some questions from listeners, but please get them in if you've, if you've got question, questions that you'd like, um, like me to ask ask them or topics you'd like me to raise then um, you can contact me via the Tom Hotspur Family Podcast Facebook page, you can do so via Twitter, the Twitter handle is at THF Podcast um, and you can also email me spurs at the Tom Hotspur Family Podcast.com um, so that's the 11th of May um, the next podcast recording a week tomorrow, Bank Holiday Monday um, after the after the North London Derby, um, by which point hopefully we'll be um, level on points with Chelsea and and, and, and top of, top of the table. Um, right. So as ever, the future's bright. The future's really white. Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, the pace of bloody 